Look at this place, y'all. Nobody in the parking lot. And this is the scenario. You got your boat out, you want to go out on the water, there's no wind, it's just a perfect day, and you might not know how to crab. So I'm going to show you what you need to know, what you need to do on a day where you, maybe you've never even been crabbing. So we're going to go through everything step by step. And we don't know where they are today. It's been a while since I've been out there. So we're going to fish from 40 feet to 145 feet, I think. 40 feet, 55, 70, 85, 100, 115, 130, and 145. We're going to drop eight pots at 15 foot increments and see where the biggest crab are. Let's get on the water, launch the boat, get this day started. Hell yeah. I unhooked the safety straps. Everything is ready to go on the boat. The only thing holding it onto the trailer is that front chain, that safety chain and the belt. Once we get down to the water, if it's a really low tide, I know I've said this before, but there's a trick I have, and this is gonna help you avoid any accidents when you're backing a trailer down a algae-filled boat ramp. Because a lot of the times when you put your parking brake on, well, all the time, actually, you put your parking brake on and that those rear wheels are locked, okay? So if your rear, rear wheels break loose, your whole car is going to slide into the water. But if you have something holding all four wheels locked, like another person, but if you're doing it solo, you can't have that, somebody's foot needs to be on the brake. And this is going to save so much anxiety when you come out here at a low tide and there's algae all over the ramp. So here we go. I'm just going to get my buoys out on the side, my fenders, so I don't scratch the boat, and then we'll launch. It's really chill today, so I can pick which side I want to go out on. And I, then I can pick which side I want to put the fenders out on. And this is how I tie them up here. Real simple like that. Keeps everything organized. Let's get this buoy out. I got another one here ready to swing out. I'm backing the boat down. And, you know, when you get really good at backing down a trailer, you can go down as fast as you want. But that's always a bad idea because the momentum of the boat combined with the 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 angle of the ramp once you start breaking you can break away and that's always a bad idea so all right got the boat in the water it's not in too deep i got the car in park now and this is my my little friend here this stick we put the stick on the brake pedal and we push the stick on the seat now we got all four wheels locked let's go unlock the safety chain back her down Obviously, make sure the drain plug is out. Safety chain off. Belt off. Normally, when I'm backing it up, I like to back it up right to where my wheels are in the water. Or where the boat comes out. Starts coming out. All right. Should be able to pull the boat right off. And when you're launching a boat, whether you're solo or not, it's always good to pull it back to the end of the dock. That way, if somebody else wants to come launch, they can launch too, and there's space for them. All right, let's go park the trailer and hop in. Just got on the water. Our boat is full of stuff, and we got about a 45 minute ride to the spot, and it's the afternoon. A lot of times the wind picks up in the afternoon, but the forecast is calm all day. So I got the life jacket on. I always like to wear that if I'm solo. At least that's the new thing I'm trying to do more. Also gonna throw the kill cord on, just make my way over and enjoy this nice ride. It's a, such a beautiful day. Hopefully we could end the day with some crab too. So let's get out there and start dropping pots. It's quite a ride out to the fishing spot. So I'm going to let the bait thaw off because it's all frozen still. This is some herring that Keith and I, the lost anchovy, caught the other day. But all I'm going to do is just put some water in the bucket and let the bait soak. Let this soak for a while. You can buy chicken. You can catch your own bait got old rockfish carcasses works perfectly get them all thawed off and by the time we get to the crabbing spot they'll be ready to go to stuff into the nets you know every area every harbor every marina is gonna have us their own little tricks and tips and all that stuff out here in Half Moon Bay once you exit the mouth you do not want to turn immediately because there's a really shallow reef all the white water way over there is breaking and I got to get around it because I am going to go up north, up to Pacifica, and that's where we're going to drop our pots. But, you know, just, just be aware. You can check with the harbor master or just talk to other boaters too because the guys who are familiar with, that, with coming out here, they'll all help you, I'm sure. All right, we 
we made it out. We're gonna start crabbing now. Now, look at this, check this out. This is the setup. This is the underwater camera for the crab pot. Got a super wide angle. I'm gonna put the, <laughs> the bait in right now and hopefully we get some good footage of these crab. So I'm gonna do that right now. This will be the first one going out. All right, here's our herring. A bunch of it should be thawed off. So I can take a big old scoop, big old handful. I'm just gonna put them right here into our mesh bag. Probably gonna do about half of this bag. Then from a rockfish trip a while ago, I saved a bunch of rockfish. So I'm actually gonna cut this one up and use the old rockfish too. Just cutting it up just so it has a little scent. Well, I don't have my knife readily available, so I'm just gonna poke it with this gaff a few times. Tie up the bag. So this is my first buoy. This is about 60 feet of line and we're going in 40 feet of water. You always want a little extra line because with the current, it's gonna pull that buoy down. And if it's just vertical, you're probably gonna lose things. So I'm gonna toss this actually. I'm gonna put us in forward. Toss the buoy overboard, get all the line out. Nice and easy, nice and easy. There's our herring. Now when you're putting these in, it's really important to keep them tight. You know, I found that out. I found that out the hard way. Keep them tight down to the bottom. Otherwise, the bag floats everywhere and it's a lot easier for these crab to get off. So I got that tight down to the bottom. All right, next one's ready to go. The bait bag is in there tight not gonna be floating around with the current. No, we're in 44 feet, so we got 10 more feet to go. That's gonna to attach to the pot. And this here is our extra coil. This is 160 feet, but we don't need 160 feet when we're fishing 55 feet of water. So this is our coil that we're not going to be fishing. This is what we are going to be fishing, and this is gonna stick up at the top near the buoy. All I did was wrap it around my arm several times, and then just, wrapped it around the coil so you know hopefully hopefully that works boom all right this i learned from christian thank you christian for you know just making this thing a little bit easier with these stainless steel clips rope keep them all separate makes things so much easier there's our fish finder we got 47 feet 48 48.5 48.9 so we're going deeper and deeper there's our first buoy oh now you know my gps position oh no Oh no. 54.7, 55.1. All right, we found the spot, 55.1. All right, we hooked up on the pot. We can just throw this overboard. Hoo and I'm confident my coil will come right out. Now this is 3 8 inch poly rope. A lot of the times the stuff you'll buy at the stores is like one, uh, one quarter, which is super thin. But 3 8 is just a lot easier on your hands and it helps a lot. Bring some gloves because if you don't have gloves, your hands will get raw. Still is legal to use these laundry detergent containers. I know it's kind of looked down on upon by some people, but as long as you're not using traps, I mean, that's okay. Look at that coil. That coil is still working, looking good. All right, number two, mark it. Now let's go to, what is it, 70 feet? 40, 55, 70, yeah, let's go to 70. Now here's a scenario that I'm not quite sure what to do. Please leave in the comments, what would you do in this situation? Those buoys there, those are not mine. And this is right about 70 feet. So obviously I'm not gonna drop it right next to it, but is there a distance between buoys, between commercial buoys that you recommend to drop pots? I'm thinking a quarter mile, 400 feet, and that should be fine. You know, give them a lot of space. But when these commercial crab season, when the commercial crab season opens, there are buoys everywhere. I think one commercial boat can have a thousand crab traps, something like that. Passing it up, going another quarter mile, and we're at 70 feet. Turn this herring into some fresh Dungeness crab, man. 
So just give it a little extra scent. We're gonna throw that other rockfish in there. I don't know, man. I like to heavily bait my bags. I know a lot of people would like to go light, but why? I like to go heavy. Okay. If you're using traps, you can go 24 hours. You can even go two days. But with these open nets, the longest you can leave them unattended for, I believe, is two hours. And we're gonna check that first one probably right after we drop the last pot. So that's gonna be about an hour. Right, same idea here. We got the stainless steel carabiner and all these crab traps come with a loop. And on the buoy, on the crab trap itself, it has this buoy because if it were just dangling in here, if you pulled it up, the crab could come out. So this should keep the line floating up and keep the opening clear for any crab. Going down 70 feet. So this line floats, right? This is the poly line, but a common misconception is if you have this floating line, it's just gonna float on top. But what's really gonna happen is a little bit will float on top at first. And then as the current pulls the buoy away from the trap, all the line will sink under. So as long as there's some kind of wind or current, having this poly rope is no problem, but you wouldn't wanna drop uh, in 40 feet of water with 200 feet of line. That could be, that could take a long time for that line to sink down. All right, next. All right, boom. Number three, 70 feet. Now, 85. Man, I went out, I'm trying to get to 100 feet, but it's like, sheesh. It's like literally six miles out to 100 feet. So I'm at 95 right now. Just to get to 100 is probably another two two miles at least so i'm going to drop here i'm i'm about two miles three miles away from the last buoy all right here we go it's number five going in it's a long ride finally made it to 100 feet deep <laughs> we're probably about seven miles away from the first one there's someone's commercial buoy right there Woo! going deep today I think the deeper water are gonna have the bigger crab. I spliced together this poly line and the lead line. So that's not going anywhere. That's a good way to keep things nice and straight. And you don't waste anything either. All right, number six going in. Oh no, that was horrible. Oh no, I think I messed that one up. I gotta go retrieve that one. Okay, all right, it's good. Closed in on 105, 110 feet. I know the last one was 100, but I've been going for like three miles so far and we've only dropped a foot, which could be good, which means it's all flat and sandy, hopefully. So I think we're ready to drop. Let's just drop this last one. This one is deeper. The current is stronger. So I'm throwing out the big yellow buoy. Uh, That'll keep everything afloat even if the current gets really strong. All right, last one, heavily baited pot going in. We'll mark this spot. And now it's the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's go check these. The by the time we get to the first one, it's gonna be about an hour and a half. And then every one, it should be an hour and a half soak, hour and a half soak, hour and a half soak, all the way to eight pots. So we're gonna troll back in slow gonna take our time let them soak a little longer now this thing here oh man this thing is worth its weight in gold that would be a lot in gold too so this is just a scotty crab puller now i use cannon downriggers when i'm fishing for salmon so i've got downrigger clips and connectors on my boat this here is a cannon connector so what i did was i spliced i cut off the cannon connection and then i attached it to the scotty connection and it, it works the same it's all 12 volt so it's just a plug you know it's plug doesn't really matter as long as the voltage is the same so i'm plug this on put this up put my gloves on and something very important when you're going crab very very important i learned this because i slapped on that underwater camera another day fishing 120 feet of water saw tons of sand dabs but what i also saw was my bait my bait uh, mesh bag just floating, floating all over. That's why I'm making sure that it's secure. Another thing that I saw, once I messed with the rope at all, once these crab 
feeding, felt some disturbance, they started fleeing as fast as they could. So it's really important. You got your buoy scoped out this way. Pick it up coming this way so you can pick it up and you'll have slack. Once you touch that buoy, start pulling it up and don't stop until you get it to the top. If you mess around with it, just getting it worked into the crab puller, 50% of the crab are gonna find their way out. Maybe even more, because those things are so fast. Um, man, it's nice going back in the current instead of going against it. All I gotta do, pull this red button, starts turning. When I need to stop it, I just press it. Pull it, stop it. All right, our deck is clear. Let's get some crab, baby. All right, coming up on the buoy. Got to get my gloves ready. All right, buoy's right up here. Let's go get it. It's the first one with the camera. Now I'm going to pull up on it, and I'm going to get it started going quick. I don't want to give those crab any time to get out. All right, here we go. Start the machine. Let's just start it. All right, here we go. The puller is straining a little bit, which is good. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. A couple good ones in there. Oh, I think. Ah, lots of small ones. Maybe not even any keepers, actually. All females. Look at that. All females on the, on the shallow pot. Literally all females and all rock crabs. That's not good. Look at that rock crab. That's a good one. Never had one of those before. It's not a dungy either. I might keep that one. All right, all the other females, we're gonna release them. All the rock crab, we'll release them too. Not a keeper in that one, y'all. Crazy. Man, this is really gonna be a good experiment to see whether or not the small ones are in close and the big males are deeper. We're gonna find out today. Here we go, number two. All right, here we go. Oh man, what is it? What is it? How many crab we got? I'm gonna say like 30 crab, maybe four keepers. I hope, here it comes. Any males in here? Any males in here? Oh man, it's heavy. Ah! Oh, come on. What do we got in here? Okay, all dungies at least. Man, all right, let's start throwing away the small females. No, no, no. This one's a male. Will it keep though? That's the question. Nope. How about this one? Yeah, we got a keeper. Woo! Yeah, first one. We got one. Hopefully it gets better the deeper we go. This one might be close. All right, we got another keeper, two. Oh man, looks like that's it. Two keepers, two keeper males. The rest look like females. So we're gonna dump them all out. Not horrible. Could be better, but it's not bad. So far my prediction was right. Shallow was small females. And a little bit deeper, we got two male keepers. So we did 40, 55. Now this is 70 feet deep. So is 70 feet where all the males hang out? Let's find out. Here's the, here's the, here's the buoy. All right, I just want to see if this is heavy. Oh, get over here. Turn on the thing. All right, one, two, three. And as this comes up, I'll disorganize it as we go. Ooh, it's heavy. It's heavy. It's very heavy. We have 70 feet now. What do we have here? Here it is. Oh my God. Ah, oh, I can't even lift it. Come on, there's gotta be, gotta be a couple of keepers in here. 
Bro, I can't even lift this up. Oh my gosh. Oh, 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 crazy. That's crazy. All right, well, we got more males, that's for sure. This is a nice keeper male. He feels really light, but that's six and a quarter. That's three. That's a male. That's a keeper. I'm putting him to the side. That's four. This one is nice. Yep, that's six inches. That's five. And here's another good one. That one's just, just short. Any other big ones in here? This one's feisty. Oh, just short too. Man, a lot of shorts. Short too. Keep her female. Female. Oh. I call them go. Oh. I think we got four keepers though. On that one. No, we got at least three. That's good. And that herring is the bomb. That lasts for a while in these nets too. Well, to me, there's no question that the crabbing is getting better the deeper we get. Next one, we're going to 80 feet. Uh, it was supposed to be 85, but you know it took so long. So the next one is 80 feet, probably three more miles, and I feel like it's going to be even better. We're most likely going to get our limit today, but now we're going to get the jumbos. We're trying to find the jumbos now. Last pull was wild. I never had a pot so filled with crabs, even though a ton of them were small. Thank goodness for this pot puller, man. This is a lifesaver. Here it is, here it is. What do we got, what do we got? Oh yeah, oh yeah. A little guy came out. All right. I think I see two keepers. Oh man. Oh man. One, yes, that's definitely a keeper. Yeah, it is, it touches. That's a nice one. Put that to the side there. How about this one? Nope, small. This one, this one's close. Oh my gosh, just small. Small, small, small. Well, that's a keeper for sure. All right, one. Ah. Not too much herring left, so they really got it better get to the next pots pretty fast so we went from 70 feet to 80 feet and now this is 90 all right Let's see how heavy it is not heavy so far oh I forgot my glove on one hand no color yet okay we got color we got color we got a lot of crab here so many small ones and I think it's because the commercial guys are all around and they got the traps. The big ones can't get out of the traps. Oh, this one is close. I think that might be the only one. Dang. Yeah, that's a keeper. Nice. So many small ones. You make sure you don't want to have any small crab accidentally get in the boat. That's a fine. It's nice to do this while you're out on the water so you don't have to do it when you go back home. All right. Let's count how many crab we got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's not bad. Seven dungies and a big old rock crab. So we got three more pots, one crab per pot. I think we can do it. Oh, it's rough out here, man. Man, I don't think I see any keepers in here at all. Crazy, man tired with no keepers in that one. Oh goodness all right let's keep it moving oh man that's heavy too heavy too heavy here it is 
Oh. Oh yeah. We do. We do. Yes. Yes. A jumbo. That's what I'm talking about. That puts us at eight. It's female. Man, just one. All right. Oh, let's dump this out. Get on to the last pot. All short females. Ugh. Start the puller. Let's go. Last one. Last one, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ugh. Anything? No keepies? This is close. I think that'll keep. That'll put us at nine. Oh my god, you kidding? Oh yes it is. Nine. And I thought I saw another one that might keep. Maybe not though. Well, we got nine. Let's toss them. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, crazy. So crazy. Well, still all in all a fun experiment. Can't wait to get back in. I got crab for a while. I'm happy, man. I'm happy. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see how the surgery goes. Hopefully I'll be back out there in no time. Peace, y'all.